Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're meeting the Tamascan. Today I will be meeting one of the world's newest wolf look-alike breeds. One which has originated from the mixing of sled dogs with lower content wolf dogs. One who originates from the freezing temperatures of Finland and has a look which some say is one of the closest to a true European wolf. Will you agree with me that the Tamascan is not only stunningly beautiful, but also has a temperament to match, sweet, kind and playful? Watch and find out if you will love the Tamascan just as much as I do. The wolf, wild and untamed. Many people dream of possessing this independent and mystical creature. But keeping a wolf in our home is fraught with problems. Firstly, it's illegal in many states and countries. Secondly, a wolf does not want to be confined to your home and will wreck it. Thirdly, any wolf that can be kept legally must be licensed and fenced outside in its own enclosure. All pretty tricky if all you want is a beautiful wolf-like companion to sit at your feet and watch TV with. So what's the solution? A wolf look-alike. A dog or wolf dog who has been bred to resemble the wolf, but is tame, legal, and also happy to live alongside you. Meet the Tamascan. The Tamascan is a new breed who was created by breeding the same dogs that make up the Northern Inuit with husky wolf dog mixes from Finland. The German Shepherd, the Samoyed, the Alaskan Malamute and the Siberian Husky are the breeds who were used to create the Northern Inuit. The breed who starred as the baby direwolves in Game of Thrones and which have been used in TV and film all over the world. Back in the 90s, a breeder called Lynn Sharkey travelled to Finland and sourced some beautiful agouti husky mixes from a famous kennel known for racing huskies mixed with Czechoslovakian wolf dogs. The appearance of these mixes were really beautiful. The Czechoslovakian wolf dog is around 25% wolf content and is a mix of Carpathian wolf and German shepherd. Used as guard and army dogs, these dogs are far heavier and not as fast as a husky. However, the look and beauty of a Czechoslovakian wolf dog totally resembles a European wolf. The Agouti Husky is a colour in the husky family, where the dog takes on a very natural rabbit-like coloration. And if the mask is a full mask that covers the face, then the resemblance to a European wolf is uncanny. The Finnish kennel had mixed the two breeds, resulting in a type of dog which looked more wolfy than an Agouti Husky, but with less of an edge to its temperament than the Czechoslovakian wolf dog. Huskies are more trusting of strangers and usually kinder, but equally a Husky will run away more than a Czechoslovakian wolf dog. The breeder brought back several of these wolf dog mixes to the UK and started a new breed which she decided to call the Tamascan. She bred them with the existing Northern Inuits and a new breed was born with a far more wolfy coat, colour and appearance than before. I was one of the first to take on a second generation puppy who I named Kiyoshi from one of the first kennels called Alba of Scotland. Kiyoshi's granddad Magnus was one of the original Polar Speed Husky mixes from Finland and stunningly beautiful. When I first saw her, my mouth fell open. She was incredible. She looked like a baby coyote or dingo. And when she howled all the way home on the train, I was repeatedly asked what on earth she was. No one knew she was a dog. Kiyoshi has been with me 12 years now and I've never had such a sweet-natured, loving and matriarchal dog in my life. She breaks up fights, she is so affectionate, every dog she meets likes her and she is incredibly beautiful. The only downside is the husky in her 
has made us seek freedom at every opportunity. So high fences had to be put up and a lock on my gate or she will walk for miles. Just like a husky. Now I am biased towards this breed. So to make this episode, I decided to go meet two other Tamascans in the UK. One called Frecky and one called Atlas. Two incredible looking males who both have a huge Instagram following. I wanted to find out if all Tamascans were as lovely as my Kiyoshi. Freki is 13.9% wolf content and Atlas has 15.3% wolf content. So a lot higher than Kiyoshi, who came out at zero wolf content. Kiyoshi didn't inherit the wolf gene, despite her brothers inheriting it. So I wanted to see if these two Tamascans were different in any way to her due to this higher wolf content. Both Freki and Atlas didn't have any Samoid in them, unlike Kiyoshi, who has 5.1% Samoid. Hey, hi Dan, how are you? Hi Anka, I'm great, great thanks. Um, I've got uh, Jerry here to meet you and also Freki over Freky, here. So wow, you... Tamascans today. I'm so excited because of course I've got my own Tamascan at home. So, hello babies. What a good boy, Jerry. What a good girl. So we've got Jerry and Frecky, just like Odin's wolves. <laughs> hey, look at you. You've got such a big head. Look at you. Frecky here is so beautiful. He looks just like a European wolf. And of course, Jerry as well she's like more of a typical looking Tamascan absolutely gorgeous temperament's beautiful what is a typical day in the life of living with your Tamascans a typical day in the life of living with Tamascans is always interesting they do like a lot of attention they like a lot of hugs the two that we've got I'd say they are wonderful with people very very friendly they do need quite a bit of exercise they've got a lot of energy and they know how to use it if you don't give them a lot of walking and a lot of mental stimulation as well because that's really important then you will see more of the naughty behaviour, more yeah. of the uh, more of the chewing, won't we, bud? <laughs> we are on our second sofa since getting fracky. Oh my goodness uh, me! <laughs> the first sofa didn't last very long. Fortunately, the second one is doing okay, isn't it, mate? Yeah. yeah. Digging in the garden, very difficult to stop them from doing that. You do have to be prepared to give a lot of time to them. They're not the dog that you can just leave in the house and go out to work all day. No. They're not a dog that you can just sort of expect to sit on the sofa and not do anything. Are they escape artists? Because I know my one, if somebody accidentally leaves the gate open, she'll just go like a husky, so she'll be gone. She won't come home. But it'll be somebody phoning me up and saying, we found your dog three miles away. And that's the husky in my one. Do you find your ones want to get out? We haven't really experienced it too much ourselves. Jerry. It's more, if she's in the garden and the door's shut for any reason, she's more trying to get back in. So oh we've actually gosh, found yes. that she's jumped over the front gate and then I found her knocking on the front oh, door well, trying to get back that's in. That's really, really, really good. Yeah. And I find that my Tamascan Kyoshi, if she sees a pheasant or a rabbit or something, she's gone and she's yeah. chasing it, highly predatory. These are exactly the same. So whilst they don't tend to try and escape from the house, we did used to try and let them off the lead, try and start that training. But um, yeah, as you say, they see something and they're gone. And they're gone. Um, so really it's safer, isn't it? Just to keep them on a, yeah. on a lead or a long leash. You yeah. can walk them on a long leash. Or in an a fenced area. Yeah. He's got a beautiful wolfy coat here. I mean, he's actually a very, very exceptional looking Tamascan. If you were walking down the road, you would definitely think that he was looking like a European wolf, wouldn't you? Yeah, we do get an awful lot of that. People yeah. either asking if they're a wolf or telling me that he's a wolf yeah. <laughs> as I'm walking do, down do the street. Do you find people are scared of him? Some people are, even though he is lovely. And to me, he's just a smiley little boy. Some yeah. people see that sort of wolfy look and it, it puts them on edge. Sometimes with big dogs, they might be really nice to children, but sometimes they can be jumpy and scratchy. What if somebody had like a one or two year old kid? Would you think they might be a little bit scratchy? I don't think so. He's very good at adapting to the size yeah. of the person or the dog that he's playing with. So if he's playing with a big dog, yeah. he'll play quite rough because he knows he can. But when he's playing with a little dog, yeah. he'll play gentle. So and he he's understands. the same with people. He's generally very, very friendly with all dogs he meets. Occasionally there'll be one that's just spooked him for some reason and he'll get a bit grumbly. But no, he just really wants to play. They just seem so healthy 
and fit and full of life even when they're old. Jerry, she's eight years old. People think she's three or four. I still take her running along with him as well. She's actually a better runner than he yeah. is because she knows to pace herself. Whereas he pulls like a madman at the start, <laughs> don't you Frecky? And then he runs out of energy. Jerry will bark at people at the door quite loudly. Uh, she'll bark when she wants things. Frecky doesn't bark very much at all. He does occasionally. <laughs> it's more sort of little woofs if he's gonna bark. Yeah but he does howl. There is one particular ice cream van that plays a tune that he likes. He will start howling and then Jerry will try and join in, but Jerry can't howl particularly oh like a wolf. Gosh, so she yes. sort of warbles. What would you say is the best thing about having a Tamascan? Um, I think the best thing about having a Tamascan is just how loving they are. The connection that we've got is fantastic. My wife suffers from epilepsy. He's worked out all by himself to tell her about 30 seconds before she's really? going to have a seizure. So he'll just uh, walk up to her and he'll very, very gently just take her hand in his mouth. Not biting, just resting his mouth on her hand. And, and then, then she, she knows. knows to sit down to make herself yeah, safe exactly. so she doesn't fall down. Yeah. After meeting the incredible looking Frecky, I was off to meet Atlas on his walk in Clumber Park. Hi, hello, Hi. how are you doing? I'm Megan, this Hi. is Atlas, my Tamasco. Hey, Atlas, how are you doing? Oh, you're so excitable. Aren't you gorgeous? Look at him, he's so big. I know. Oh, what a lovely coat. Atlas, you're massive. Well, I'm here with Megan and Atlas, and boy, he is huge, which goes to show that Tamascans being quite a new breed, they still quite vary, don't they? Yeah, he is on the bigger end. I think um, the breed standard is like 25 to 28 inches for males, and he's around 29 to 30 inches. Yeah, that's so. what I was thinking, you know, yeah. that could be amended. And also, he's really, really well behaved. A lot of Tamascans I meet aren't, <laughs> and they're more like huskies and they run away. Did you find him really easy to train? He's really smart, he picks things up really quickly like new tricks and stuff he'll pick up in like a day he does get a bit bored you've got to really motivate him use like high value treats in busy situations and things like that yeah. otherwise he's more interested in something yeah. else for somebody that's like the first time owner having um, a tamascan what would you say they they need to expect they need to expect that their dog's going to be smarter than them <laughs> 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 they'll outsmart them and they'll challenge them in keeping their interest. But Atlas himself is really good in the house. He's never been destructive or anything like yeah. that. I know that some of them can be. There's other people that I know where they've had their sofas eaten and their floors torn off. So it just really go to show, doesn't it? That, that being a, a very, very new breed, it's the character yeah, almost varies. hasn't quite settled yet, has it? So you're not quite sure what you're getting. The general history is, first of all, the original ones sort of came from the line that the Utanagans and the Northern Inuits yeah. came from. And then they went off to Finland to source some arctic breeds. Blue Stag went to Finland and used some like Finnish racing huskies, some mixes between those and Czechoslovakian black and then she used a wolf dog called Boogie <laughs> which is Atlas's great granddad I think. Yes. And other dogs which you find quite common in the Tamascan breed are things like Samoyed, Alaskan Malamute. What other ones do we get um, sometimes? They've recently added Gronendale and White Swiss Shepherd and some German Shepherd yeah. I think. Other than that it's usually northern breeds. I know some of them have come back with Greenland dog in Embark. What exactly has he got in his DNA then that makes up his particular type of Tamascan? I think mostly Husky, some Malamute, um, Czech Black and a little bit of American Wolf Dog. A little bit of American Wolf Dog. And there are Tamascans out there that don't have any wolf content in at all. Where do you think the future of the breed is going? Would you actually call the Tamascan a Wolf Dog or not? Uh, no, they're not a wolf dog. There have been specific outcrosses that have been added that do have wolf content, but they're usually in Europe. They're only sent to legal countries. Yes. The aim is generally by breeders to bring the wolf dog content down to yeah. zero. So really what they're doing at the moment is opening up the genetic diversity in order to make it a healthy breed. Yeah. How will they go in the future as far as recognising them? In America, they've worked to have them recognised by Arbor, which is the American Rare Breed Association. People have done like different shows and things like that where they are recognised as an official rare breed. 
-hmm. But in terms of kennel club recognition, I don't think that that's like anywhere near in the future. No. Because we don't want to have to close our stud box. Yeah. One of the things with the kennel club is that they do make you close your stud box and we want to continue with the genetic diversity. And right bringing in new lines and stuff so that they're as healthy as possible and it keeps the coefficient of inbreeding down. Well, I think what's really interesting is that if you want to find out what exactly is in your Tamascan, then you can sign up for Embark DNA testing. And the reason I like Embark is because it has European wolf DNA. And a lot of the um, DNA companies don't actually have European wolf DNA, which means that when you test your dog, if it's got wolf content, it will just come back as unknown. Today had been a heavenly day for me, meeting a breed which has got to be one of my all-time favourites, and I was not disappointed. The Tamascan is not only incredibly beautiful, but very trainable and responsive. The German Shepherd DNA has really helped here. As they are a very new breed and are currently being outcrossed with wolf dogs to improve the gene pool, you won't really know what yours has in it until you get a DNA test. So some are carrying higher levels of wolf blood and some are actually carrying zero wolf content due to the wolf blood gradually being bred out. Being someone who has worked heavily alongside wolves and wolf dogs, the Tamascan's wolf content doesn't show drastically anymore in its character and it really acts like a dog now more than a wolf dog. I would recommend this breed as a beautiful family companion but you must be up for a few walks a day and be able to train and stimulate them. Imagine you are taking on a large Arctic breed or husky and you can imagine the work and coat shedding involved. If you don't mind that and can guarantee a home for life, then it's one of the sweetest breeds around. If people want to find out more about the Tamascan, what would be a really, really good web page to go to? The Tamascan Dog Register website is a really good tool for information. We've got the history of the breed, health information, information about different breeders and the general like personality of the dog. And also there's another website I've heard where you can actually go on and you can register your own Tamascan. What would that be? It's a pedigree database where you can have your dog's like information and pedigree being put on there. It's called wolflookalike.com. And you can find out about your siblings and closely related Tamascans and, and yeah. everyone put their Embark results on there so you can sort of see what goes into the Tamascan breed. And every now and then you'll get a notification, won't you? And it'll say there'll be like a closely related yeah. sibling or something that's popped up. And then you can stay in touch with Tamascans all over the world. I think it's a fantastic idea. And if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch on the fantastic, beautiful Tamascan, then please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every single week where I'll be bringing you more fantastic episodes on dogs, wolves, wildlife and conservation. Won't I, Atlas? Yes and no. I know he says, I love Animal Watch. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Bye for now. <laughs>